Agradezco su declaración al... I thank um, the president of the Kunas United of Nabuguana, and I give the floor to the Venerable Bimal Biku of Asia. Mr. President, sisters and brothers, please allow me to speak a few words in my own language. Zhu Bondulok, greetings, dear friends. Mui Bangladeshor Parvot Choto Grammar, Sakma Bodo I am a Buddhist monk from Chakma tribe of Chittagong Hill Tracks of Bangladesh. Ju, thank you. My mother tongue is really the only thing which has been left to me. I have already lost my land, my traditional way of life, my family, and my friends. Today, the 10th December 1992 is finally a day which marks a, a resurrection of hope for millions of people designated as indigenous or tribal. Let me present the citizens of, the, of these people of Asia as I have seen it. Throughout Asia, you will find indigenous and tribal people. Their lives have become a daily nightmare, an ocean of suffering. It is only the intensity which varies from one country to another, from one moment to another. The problems have the same roots, non-respect for human beings and their rights. There is no respect for our culture, religions, or traditions. The present citizens of the indigenous and tribal peoples of Asia is not just a problem. It is a drama which dishonors the human condition and changes must be made. The situation has become so intolerable that there is increasing violence, provoking even more misery. But I have not come to complain, nor to seek out the guilty. I have come to propose four actions, to listen suffering and to build peace. Right to truth. It is only by having the true situations known that we will be able to transform it. I therefore ask that the working group of, of, on indigenous populations be made permanent part of the human rights bodies of the United Nations. The members of the working group should be able to travel freely to see the reality in our areas and to make their findings public to the world's media as well as to the United Nations. Currently, the truth of the situations is too often hidden. Our only force is truthful information. Our lives are menaced because our situations is often unknown. Thus, the working groups should have offices in many countries so that indigenous and tribal people can contact them. We will then be able to live in, in harmony with all the world. B, the right to land. Precise territory must be set out for the indigenous and tribal people. We do not want to be a museum for anthropologists, but we wish to be able to choose our style and speed of development. Thus, the working groups should encourage 
his parliament in Asia to grant thee through laws our right to land. The working group should monitor that these laws are respected. Yet in our eyes, the most precious resource is the human person. We wish to see harmonious development of the human potential, physical, intellectual, psychological, and spiritual. The right to life and to justice. We must put an end to massacres and prevent armed conflicts. When there is killing or rape, the law must be respected and the accused brought to justice. The working group should encourage respect for law and its reestablishment when it has been weakened. The impunity of guilty parties is an insult to justice and dignity. In order to avoid armed conflicts, there should be training in active nonviolence as told and practiced by Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King. We therefore ask that the working group organize such training, drawing upon such people as the Venerable Tiknathan, Sulok Sivaraksa, and Adolfo Ferez Esquivo, and such specialist organizations as the International Fellowship of Reconciliation. The rights of the child. You have had the wisdom to recognize the rights of the child by an international convention in 1989. For indigenous people, our children are our only hope. I therefore ask that UNICEF help to implement the rights of the children of indigenous and tribal people especially the right to education. Most of our children are currently deprived of this right through lack of schools, teachers, and equipment. I therefore ask UNESCO to mark 1993 by giving a scholarship for higher education to indigenous and tribal youth. If their potential is fully developed, these young people will help the whole of world society. I also ask UNESCO to help preserve and enrich our culture and religions, our identity and way of life. We are all human beings, not superior, not inferior. We have so many things to learn from others in human community and we can also share our values. We have to realize that we are interbeing. What you do has an impact on us. What we do has an impact on you. Our children are already carrying a very heavy burden, a financial debt to the richest countries. For me, this burden is really an injustice against those children. We, the indigenous and tribal people, must also recognize our past mistakes. For instance, we have not fully respected the dignity and rights of the women in our communities. Through education, UNESCO must help to promote the rights of women in our societies. We must also learn to renounce violence. We share a planet with other societies, and we must learn to live together in harmony. We are different, but not enemies. Rather, we have common enemies to fight together. Ignorance, fear, hatred, and violence. We can be mutually enriched by our differences. In fact, it is the diversity which creates our richness. The thought of reconciliations between our peoples must involve respect for justice. There is no way to peace. Peace is the 
only way. Thus, the United Nations must promote a new human culture, that of non-violent ways on the respect of the person, truth, and the rule of law. Thank you very much for your effort to know us, to recognize us, and understand us. This cry of distress, by your help, comes today, this 10th of December, a cry of hope from my heart. Shukita Huntu. May all beings be happy. Thank you very much.